local enterprise office in Cavan, as part of Cavan County Council, offers a full business and information service to new and existing enterprises in the county. We serve as a first point of contact, offering you a full range of services and supports, whether you're starting a new business or growing or expanding an existing business. The local enterprise office in Cavan offers some key supports, and some of those include enterprise skills training, that may be a start your own business programme or a management development programme, business information, advice and referral, signposting you to other organisations or agencies that may also be able to help you, financial assistance, this would take the form of a business priming grant or a business expansion grant, the trading online voucher scheme, this can help you to develop an e-commerce presence within your business. We also have a dedicated mentoring programme and access to various business networks that the local enterprise office supports. We promote entrepreneurship across the county and we do that by collaborating and working in partnership with the local business community and all local and national enterprise agencies. Our role is to foster new business startups and to grow existing businesses, driving job creation and contributing to a thriving, sustainable economy here in our county. The local enterprise office looks forward to working with you and we want to make it easier for you to do business and more importantly, we want to maximise your business potential. My name is Darren Cherry. I co-founded Optinergy in 2010. Optinergy is a specialised operations and maintenance business in the wind industry. Uh, we focus on projects in the Republic of Ireland together with Northern Ireland and we're increasingly looking outside of Ireland. We originally started in the wind industry in 1997 in the development of wind projects um, principally to utilise upland agricultural land that had limited value for, for agricultural purposes. Uh, our development um, sort of brought us through the planning stage, it brought us through the construction stage and inevitably we've seen that, that Ireland didn't really have a solution for the operation stage. Uh, the market was being dominated by uh, multinational companies like GE, like Vestas, like Siemens. And we felt an Irish company uh, would be better able to react to the needs of Irish customers. We formed Optinergy uh, initially to service the needs of our own business, but it quickly grew to something that served the needs of some of our customer and, and clients' business. One of the first contracts we won was a 10 turbine project uh, and it was a utility scale customer with a lot of credibility. Uh, it made such a difference to the business in terms of bringing credibility to both ourselves and our other customers but also helped us internally to put the infrastructure around the business. Uh, the second breakthrough within the business was we made a, a substantial breakthrough when we brought on board somebody to lead the marketing side of the business and that really made such a difference in terms of bringing the company from from at that stage 14 turbines to where we are now 180 turbines. Our business is known as a one-stop shop uh, for operations and maintenance in the wind industry in the island of Ireland. So we do everything from remote monitoring right through to remote diagnostics uh, resets all the way through to technical engineering and physical maintenance and repairs to wind turbines to, to extend their lifetime. As the business has grown it's necessitated the growth of the team within the company uh, when we started out, we were very much focused on business development, but we're also focused on the delivery of a quality service to our customers. And one feeds the other. If we don't do a quality job, we're not going to have new business. Uh, we try not to micromanage our staff. Uh, we try to let them grow within the business. We recently became Ireland's leading uh, independent service provider uh, through the acquisition of another O&M business that we bought in Ireland. Uh, so we're now the leading operations and maintenance provider on the island of Ireland. For Optinergy, some of our next challenges come from going to, to larger scale technology. So traditionally we've worked on megawatt scale wind turbines. Uh, we're now moving towards multi-megawatt turbines. Turbines are getting larger. The, the, the engineering challenges around those turbines uh, are getting larger. And for a business like Optinergy, it's really important that we grow the business into that space. Uh, part of that growth will also come from expansion outside the island of Ireland. So we've got a fairly extensive footprint on the island of Ireland. Uh, we've now got opportunities in the UK which we're actively pursuing uh, and we do see life further field, particularly in the, the remote monitoring, the remote engineering on, on wind energy projects. 
uh, that's something we're, we're increasingly uh, getting inquiries from continental Europe on. In the early days after forming Optinergy, we were in close contact with the Cavan Local Enterprise Office. Uh, the, the interaction with the, the Enterprise Office was focused on mentoring us in terms of growing the business and looking internationally at that time to Northern Ireland, uh, increasingly looking beyond that. Uh, we worked really closely with the team in there in terms of enhancing our, our, our staff count uh, in, the, in the early days when, when it was more challenging to do that. The best way to attract new customers is to do a really good job for the customers you've got. Um, we find that keeping closely in contact with our customers is a good way to ensure that sparks don't turn into fires. Uh, the other thing we find is that you should always follow the spirit of an agreement and not the letter of an agreement. The letter is very important, it's, it's all really good, but your customer will value you following the spirit of the agreement as well as the letter. One of the most important things to do in a business is to keep in control of your cash flow. Uh, one of the ways we do that is by keeping working closely with our suppliers to ensure that we're getting best value for money. We also network extensively with businesses outside of our direct competitor area, so in continental Europe and beyond, where we can compare notes with how they're running their business with how we're running our business. One of the biggest advantages we found in engaging with the local enterprise office was in the credibility it brought when we later engaged with venture capitalists or with Enterprise Ireland indeed. Uh, it was seen that the business had been through due diligence with the local enterprise office and it was seen in a very positive light when we later engaged. Uh, my name is Elena Brennan, uh, my business is called Elena Brennan Jewellery and I'm located in Lysteria, Cavan, County Cavan. I've been making jewellery since I left college in 1990 and I straight away went to work um, for the trade in Dublin, jewellery trade in Dublin, designing and making master patterns, so I've been involved since the early 90s. Went out on my own probably in 2009, um, a year or so earlier, a local market set up and uh, an indoor market, so I cut my teeth on that and I got used to dealing with people and having my own stand, so that kind of gave me the boost I needed to get out on my own and to take a plunge. One of the breakthrough moments that stands out in my head was um, I designed a collection called the Children of Lure uh, Jewellery for a manufacturer in Dublin and it went very big. So um, that gave me confidence that I could create something that people would really like. Um, there was a waiting list of eight weeks at one stage for the different jewelries around the country to get pieces of this jewellery from the manufacturers. Uh, another high point in my career was when I was asked by the Irish government to make a few pieces for the American president's family, um, so that was pretty cool. A few years ago I received funding from the Cavan Local Enterprise Office and that enabled me to, to move into this studio. Before that I had a few rooms set aside in my house and uh, worked everything from there, so that's been fantastic to have a studio that is outside of, of home and I can keep proper office hours and separate family life from work life. I also bought um, quite a few expensive tools that time and it really brought me forward. Um, the local enterprise office in Cavan has been great for supporting my business through um, mentoring, uh, through the, the local classes that they would hold, the evening classes, they've been great. There was an Accelerate program that I did which was which was fantastic for really concentrating and you know there was case studies with maybe six different businesses so that really was fantastic to hear other people's problems and to try and solve them together. What I'd like to do next for my business would be to continue with my current collections um, and improve them and add more dramatic pieces but also to go into uh, one-off bespoke high-end pieces because I definitely think there is a market there for them. The best piece of advice I've received about running my business would be to have an admin person, either part-time or full-time, whatever suits, to look after the, the paperwork, to do the invoicing, to chase the money, and to leave me uh, time to create, because that's what I do best, create. My top tips for attracting new customers to my business would be to attend the two Irish trade fairs, um, Showcase Ireland in January and the Autumn Home and Gift Fair in August. Also, um, social media is very important, but pick your channels, choose your channels. I choose Instagram uh, because it's very visual and also Facebook and you can interact with your, with your um, customers. They can also leave feedback and reviews and that has been vitally important. 
I think what I do well in my business to, to get repeat business would be to, um, to be very particular about the finish of every piece, that it has to be of a very high standard. And um, customer service, um, if somebody rings and has a problem, I sort it. I sort it in any way I can. Um, and um, just look after your customers because they will look after you, then they will come back. My name is Jerry McIntyre. I'm the owner and MD of Cootel Precision Engineering in Cootel County Cavan. At the start of 1992, when I started up, I started off with a couple of machines. One of my first big breakthroughs was to get a job at Abbott, you know, a multinational company. And I was so delighted to get it, and I manufactured it, gave it down to them. And they were very happy with it and I was even more delighted when I got the cheque of £67 for it. They lodged it in the bank straight away. Cootel Precision Engineering is famous for friendliness. To be able to talk to people at their level, when somebody's trying to explain to you that they want a job done but they're not just 100% sure, that you can grasp all that information from them. They know what they want, but they don't know exactly how they want it. So it's, it's, it's figuring all that out and being able to to deliver them a quality product at the end of the day. Over the years, uh, the local enterprise office has been very helpful uh, with financial assistance and grant assistance to buy machines, uh, with mentoring and with uh, training packages. And they're constantly running them and they're constantly updating them and they've uh, been of real value to people like me. Over the next few years, Coot Hill Precision plans to expand even more with maybe going into 3D printing for printing consumable parts and special purpose one-off parts um, for customers to see what the part would be like before we even go down the road of designing it even further. We will invest in more equipment and more staff as well. There's always challenges. No matter where we go, because we live on the border here, we have you know, currency fluctuating, but we have to live with that. I'm not going to move the business, so we have to deal with it. There's highs and there's lows, but we're going to move forward. There's no doubt about that. Some of the best advice I got when I was starting up in business was just to be honest with people, to be honest with your customers, to, to not, don't tell them a lie or don't tell them you're going to have something made for them when it's not going to be done. If, if I promise a, a guy on a factory floor that he's going to have a part on a Monday morning at 9 o'clock to change it, and he hasn't got it and production stops, he's in trouble, I'm in trouble, that's probably me gone for him. If for any reason I thought I wasn't going to have it there, I would tell him four days before that, look, I've had a problem, I'm sorry, really sorry, I can't make it. He's better off knowing at least he can reschedule. Be honest, keep talking to them, and they'll always be your friend and they'll always be loyal. When you're trying to attract a new customer, you really got to find out all there is to know about that customer and that company before you make any approaches to them, that when you do start talking to them, that they realize you, you, know, you understand their business. And if they feel that you understand their business enough, you're, you have a better chance of doing business with them. Regarding costs and all that, I mean, you have to keep on top of your energy costs. The one that, you know, if I had to let my energy costs go on this year, that would be up 20%. 20% is enormous. You know, after a lot of dealing and haggling, it's gone up 2.5%, which to me is too dear, it shouldn't be gone up. The team of guys that I have worked with me are, are there for, I'm 24 years in business. We work with each other, we always help each other. We're part of a family. I always get the return from them, because my business doesn't just open the door at nine o'clock and close at five. It can be Saturday, it can be Sunday, it can be five o'clock in the morning. So when I need them to walk, they step up to the mark each time. And I'm very proud of them. It's a, it's a great business and I love it. And I love coming to walk every morning. My name is Brian O'Donoghue and the business is Virginia Medical Supplies. The business was started in 2012 and the early days was when I had an idea. 
going from an idea onto practical paper is difficult. We bought 90,000 blister packs to test the market to see if this was going to work. We put it out there and we got a great response which proved the blister packs were going to work. We had a few, maybe about eight clients or even less, but we decided, okay, we're going to jump in and we did a um, pharmacy show. We went to it and the feedback, I think within two weeks we had 63 pharmacies. Everybody who has seen the blister packs go, this is the best thing in the world. This is going to make it so much better. It is going to improve compliance and it's going to be so much easier to administer the medication, make safe that you're giving the medication to the right person and it's the right medication. Be careful what you wish for because as it started to grow, we had more demands on us. We wanted more change. Um, and with more requests to do better and do better, we had to get more programmers and different programmers in to specialize. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was one of the key moments in the success. The local enterprise office was brilliant. They uh, enforced me to do a very, very, very detailed, specific business plan. Um, and it was through the local enterprise office, having the meetings with them, as I said initially, you're, oh my God. But after that, when you, when you go through the whole process, yeah, it's, it's essential. It's a key thing of making a business work is to do that business plan. The local enterprise office gave us a grant, which we used to then get an Irish company to manufacture the blister packs. If we didn't have that grant, we might have been, might have been getting them made in China. So it was through that initial capital investment that we were able to, to start and then expand on that. I'm very fortunate with the people I have they are working for me, that they're extremely dedicated and committed to making this work. Um, so we had to sit back and say, okay, well, how are we gonna make this better? We're gonna to have to change this team and get a new team of programmers. You have to be able to always stop, look at where you are, where you started, where you are now, and what's in the future. And if you don't do that, it's, it's gonna make it much more difficult for you. Part of our um, initial plan was to build a robotic system that would dispense the tablets into the blister packs. In the middle of next year or this year, we will have a robotic system designed, manufactured in Ireland that will do all this for us. And we already have clients that are taking a huge interest in it all around the world. We have Dubai, the Middle East, the UK and Europe. We now have over 50% of the pharmacies using our blister packs, which is pretty impressive for a small company to start off with nothing, to have over 50% of the shops in Ireland using their blister packs is pretty good. We are now, we have started last year going into the UK, new market, new difficulties. The best advice I can give is do the most intense, detailed business plan you can do. Um, who you're going to sell to, why you're going to sell to, when you're going to sell to, and where you're going to sell it. I'm in first thing in the morning, I'm last to leave. If you work hard, we have a great etiquette in our workplace that they are all so dedicated because they see the passion that is in me about this product. Martin Kennedy, I'm from AgriDirect. We are a hardware DIY and agri business. Um, we took an element of our business, the agri sector, and brought it online in 2011. Being based in West Cavan, we had a limited audience for our business. Um, being close to the border, we were being uh, restricted by uh, sterling rates. Uh, it was a variable outside our control. Um, we felt we needed to move our business to a wider audience. We done a bit of research on this um, in 2009-2010 and we felt that going online was the best option for our business. Since then our AgriDirect has become a very important part of our overall business. Uh, we have seen 20% growth in our overall business uh, last year. 35% of our customer base is outside Cavan. We have brought our product range to a whole new wider audience. Sales tend to continue after we close at 6 o'clock, so we get customers buying from us right up until 12 and 1 o'clock at night. 
We find that even our in-store customers are researching products before they come in-store, so they come in, they know what they want, they know how much they need, they know how much price it is. We have found that we've had to take on three new staff recently in the business uh, for the new roles that have been created and for the volume of business that we are doing on AgriDirect. We've received a lot of support from the local enterprise office in Cavan. In 2014, we needed to reinvest in our site. Um, the trading online voucher allowed us to invest the level we needed to uh, to bring our site up to spec with what customers expected from us uh, and keeping us found within search engines like Google. The accelerated management training program was very beneficial uh, from business support and defining the, the direction that our business took after that. Next on the agenda for AgriDirect, we still feel there's a lot of opportunity in the Irish market. We want AgriDirect to become the name and brand of choice with Irish farmers um, from a competitive point of view, but also from a convenience point of view. We are currently looking at the UK market. We have had a lot of inquiries from there over the last 12 months. The biggest challenge to face in our business, um, being based in West Cavan, demographics is always going to be a challenge. You only have so many people in our local area. Um, the uh, online store has allowed us to cross that bridge. Going online has been a huge learning curve for me as a business owner, but also for the employees in the business. Our local enterprise office in Cavan has helped us turn our local traditional bricks and mortar business into an IT retail store. I myself didn't come from an IT background, uh, but as a business owner, you have to upskill in all these areas. We took in um, people with IT experience, but you need to keep a step ahead. You need to know what makes your online business tick. Uh, you need to learn about search engine optimization. Um, you need to know about Google Analytics. What metrics do you need to be looking for? What, um, Google AdWords is a very important part of your business, but you need to understand this before you get involved in it. All these elements are very important parts of making an online store work. We put a huge focus on customer retention. We find fast delivery is crucial on this, and good customer services. You need to personalise your business. People need to feel that they can lift the phone and get in touch with you uh, when they have a question. It's important to have a good team around you. You have to work closely with your team at all time. They they get to know what you expect from them, but they need to know what direction the company is going as well. They need to have a good working atmosphere, and they need to feel that they are appreciated within the work environment. The best advice I've got in running my business is always keep an eye on your margin. Growth is great, but if you're not profitable at the end of the day, you will not be able to reinvest in your company. And when you go online, you will have to continually invest in your business if you want to keep that level of growth. The best advice I give to someone starting out with a new online business is get a good web provider. You need someone you can work with on an ongoing basis. They need to have an interest in your business. I'm Kira Moran and I'm one of the directors of Moran's Mega Jam based in Balignac here in Cavan. Well originally we started in 2010 and we started off at the farmers market uh, here in Cavan and as you see today in Super Valley, Super Valley has been a big part of our success story. So we were working away at the farmers market and I happened to meet Sean Tarpey who owns this particular uh, Super Value and he came along and said I love the product but I don't like your packaging and I don't like wherever else that you had there and he said if you change that you can have my store. I said well sorry who are you? And he said, I own the two local super values and you're very welcome to stock your product in their stores. And that's really how it started for us. We'd never intended it to start off as a business. It was sort of a hobby, really, as I trained as a chef and I just really wanted to stay in the food side of the business. Well, the Food Academy was giving us a platform that we wouldn't have necessarily had otherwise. So as you can see in the dedicated stands in every single super value now, they have for all the local Irish suppliers. Now we already had about 20 super value stores when Food Academy came along. Um, but it's been really beneficial to our business because it meant that we are now stocked in 220 super values across the entire country. So we're now in every county in Ireland representing Cavan, which wasn't something that we were always able to do. The local enterprise office here in Cavan has been really beneficial to our business. From the very beginning when we went to them, they were able to give us mentoring to say, look, this is what you need to do in order to set up the business. But when we decided to move from our home 
which is where originally we made all the jams to a purpose-built unit in Ballinia. Now it's not a factory by any way, but it's a small kitchen. Uh, our local enterprise were fantastic in coming out uh, and helping us to design the building, telling us what we needed, giving us the support financially that we needed, like uh, grants and that sort of thing. But the mentoring has really been successful and even ongoing, like lately we had our local enterprise office helping us develop our, um, our website and stuff like that. So they've been beneficial there from the very beginning. Our business has increased. We've now up to producing about a thousand jars a day and yet we still do it the old fashioned way. We have a pot and a wooden spoon and we still fill every single jar by hand. Uh, it just meant that we were able to increase the staff levels that we've had and we're now producing more and more jams throughout the year. Hi, my name is Charlene Brady and uh, my company is Charlene's Holton Pantry. It all started about um, five months ago, back last September. Um, I was, I've always had an interest in food and nutrition anyway, but it was just, I found that when I was looking for a snack, um, there was very little in the way of healthy snacks available or on the shelves. You're just bombarded with the high sugar, high fat foods. So, um, I started making up my own at home and bringing them for lunch and whatever and um, then um, I thought other people seemed to be getting interested, family, friends were, were tasting and, and liked the taste so I started bringing them to the farmers market up in Virginia. It allowed me to um, get other people's feedback and um, there was a very positive response to the products and then the repeat custom kind of gave me the encouragement to, to go forward with the, with the idea and keep going. So that's how it started really. Well I'd heard of the Food Academy, um, basically I've seen it at uh, local events such as Taste of Cavan and it always um, it got me interested. I got speaking to other people that were on the Food Academy and their experiences were very positive. So I contacted the local enterprise office to see would my products be um, suitable for, for the programme and uh, they encouraged me to, to apply so that's how I heard about it. Yes, the Food Academy has assisted me with um, getting into shops. Um, I have been approved for seven super value stores in the Cavan um, area so it has been brilliant to, in getting my products to market. Um, it's also given me the chance to do demonstrations in store which has been really good again getting more feedback on products and um, getting to know what the customer is really looking for and the next step then is to apply for financial funding which will help me uh, progress with my business allow me to purchase the necessary equipment I need to increase the volumes and get to more shops in the future. My name is Paul Farley I'm the owner of Tumully Box Tea, Tumully in County Cavan we started back with a hand grater um, made by my father, um, peeled the potatoes by hand on a milking stool into a creamy can so it, it really is what you started, it started from zero because there was nobody else making, everybody made box tea that time for themselves but nobody made box tea actually for commercially to sell so we were the first actually, any of the, we, we were the first people to start commercially making box tea in Ireland. So I spent a long time developing that product that's out there now, that gluten-free tromoli box tea. It's a dumpling, it's a, it's a, a boiled box tea. You go to Food Academy conference and you might only take one thing home with you, but that one thing is the thing that will turn your business around. You see, if, if more businesses done that, come together with local enterprise, no matter whether it's in food, engineering or anything like that. So what I got from the local enterprise office, apart from the support, moral support, you got mentoring support, I got financial support, and, and just general support of when you came with an idea, they didn't, you know, everybody looked at it and said, let's run with that, or let's not run with that. No, that, we don't think that'll work. You know all about your own product, but what you don't know about is how to sell it, how to, how to market it, wh what consumers need, consumer trends, you know, lots of little bits and pieces like that that you need to get where all the mentors that they send to you. Apart from everything else, that's the bit that you need. People don't know till they buy it. So you need your packaging, your presentation right, that people pick it up and bring it home, right? It could be the best thing in the world, but if it's badly packaged, you're not going to get anywhere. Sometimes your stock is seasonal, like if it's veg or something like that, hedge forward that you're getting a set price that's coming into you for 12 months, try and hedge it for 12 months, and you say, right, if you have a supplier saying, right, this is the price for 12 months, you know where you stand for 12 months. So that's probably one of the secrets you can do. Top tips for keeping your customers is to be honest with what you're doing. Honesty is the best policy. And I mean that in honest in food, honest in business.
Our vision for County Cabin is to ensure that all stakeholders are working together to deliver a cabin in 2021 that's a place we can be proud of, a place that uh, is a good quality of life and a place that's a great place to live, to work, to invest and to do business. This vision is included in our local economic and community plan which was adopted by Cabin County Council in September of last year and it sets out a strategic framework for the economic and community development of the county. Enterprise and job creation is at the heart of our local economic plan. The local enterprise office is central to delivering uh, objectives to promote development of small and medium enterprises in the county. The local enterprise office in Cavan ensures that there's a focused and structured enterprise support structure in place in the county to support our economic growth. This growth relies on the strategic partnership between Cavan County Council, the local community development committee, the strategic policy committee for enterprise and economic development, as well as working with private and public sector agencies and local communities as well as the citizens of County Cavan. On behalf of the Cahirlick of Cavan County Council, Councillor Fergal Curtin and myself, I would like to pay tribute to everyone involved in promoting and driving the enterprise message in the county. And we will work together to position County Cavan regionally as a county to invest in and to be a sustainable, innovative county for the future.